So we'll be working on this again next month, next month as well. Um, and thank you once again for each and every one of you completing your surveys so, so quickly. So quickly. Um, like everybody completed them well before the deadline, which is, be pleased to hear that, Brett. Like nice. for most of them days before, like done immediately. Except poor Abby, she still got it done on time. We completed yeah. it, I think, three times. Three times. And it wasn't until I saw on Slack that Abby had gone done, and she's the first one that had been done before Elise's popped through like that. And then I'm, we're waiting on Abby's. It's like, where's Abby? So she obviously, yeah, obviously didn't submit it or whatever, but poor woman. <laughs> All right, so delegation. It's about um, granting authority to another person on your behalf to achieve results. That's what delegation is all about. And it's really important that, it's interesting here, the art of delegation, deciding on what not to do is as important as deciding on what to do. So you're all pretty good at deciding on what to do, but deciding on what not to do, not so great. All right? And the whole, the whole thing is, and we talked a bit about time management last, last month, is utilising your time in the most valuable way for your team, your store, and for sponsor. And because you're leaders in the, in the stores, your value needs to be at the level where you are doing the things that other people should not be doing or other people cannot be doing. And the things that add real value to the sales, the QSC and the profitability of the store and to the development of your team. And often we talk about the profitability and the QSC, that development of your team, hi Annie, um, and ensuring that you have people coming through all the time is really, really important. Um, Jason, I've also given you um, survey results for Jelani and Lisa, and also their workbooks as Lisa's well. Lisa's home, I'm too late. Okay, that's cool. You've, you've got all of that stuff. For her. <laughs> so I know that quite a few of you feel uncomfortable delegating sometimes. So I really want to just go straight to and what we're looking at is what to delegate, when to delegate, how to delegate, and who to delegate to. But what I want you to do is just from your surveys and in that blank bit in your workbook, just a couple of things is why don't you delegate? Why don't you delegate and what are the things that stop you from delegating? Just jot a couple of things down and I want to get a, a couple of themes happening on the food chart. Recording. We all good? Yeah. Sorry. Sorry, I wasn't sure. Brad's boot is like open. This one? The oh, oh, he's boot. Oh, good. 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 He had his arms completely full when he was coming in, so probably not enough arms left yeah. to shut the yeah. to shut the thing. You should be automated. Um. <laughs> so Alyssa. <laughs> so come on in, work. <laughs> 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 and just do on this page, like any. Hey. <laughs> no words, just finger pointing. <laughs> Very offensive. <laughs> Steel coming out. <laughs> I think I've got the percentage right too, actually. <laughs> Alright, so let's just get a little bit of feedback. Keep, keep writing, and, and if you hear anything that you haven't considered before, write it down as well. So tell me, why, why don't you delegate sometimes? And what prevents you? Go on, Jackie. Um, being perfectionist. Sometimes it's really hard to trust that person to make make it the right expectations that you have. Yeah. Who else in their survey or now put because of expectations, high, your, your own high expectations? Yep. That was a common thread throughout your surveys. And who else put this rise? Delegate. <laughs> 
Yeah, sometimes it's just lack of time full stop and sometimes it's also that time the training required. Who else put that? That, that is an issue. Yeah. And that training, that ability to, I don't have time to train the person or they don't have the skills and I need to train them and I don't have time, that was a common thread that came out as well, which is really which was really interesting. Any other main reasons? I think Oh, cool. I think we've got all of the all of the common threads. So, really want you to consider these along along the way as to why you don't trust them, why you don't find the time to delegate, why you don't find the time to, to train, or you know, maybe you need to delegate training to you know, depending on, on what it is, and also those expectations as to why that's an issue. Right. Okay. Cool. <coughs> that there and you can still still see it as we go. Alright, so let's have a look. The whole whole point is it actually takes effort to delegate, doesn't it? Yeah, it takes time, it takes effort and it takes communication. And sometimes sometimes it's easier or it appears easier just to do it yourself. Yeah? Alright? So tell me, in the last Week. Last week, I want you to think about think about how many times there may may have been where you could have delegated, but like, but you didn't because it took too much effort, or you just went, oh, you know what? I'll just do it myself. Anyone think of a time in the last week where you could have delegated, but you didn't because it took a lot of effort, and you went, oh, I'll just do it myself. No one? Lisa. Lisa? Oh, Lisa, you're yeah, going. Well, tell us what happened, Lisa. Well, I'm really busy, so I was like, I did that, 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 I Anyone else? And thank you for stepping in and welcome to you. Stepping in and just going, okay, I'll talk. That's good, everyone. Jason. Did you go? No, that wasn't. I did. Yeah, go on, Greg. But I'm, I'm bad at this, so yeah. don't, don't follow my lead. Uh, but I'm, I'm improving after 20 years, so I'm really... Yeah. Um, but so you I... can all get and, and by, and by the Brad way, is. by the way, because Brad's improving at his delegation, that means you have to delegate more. Because otherwise you're just going to have a whole lot more stuff piled on top of you. Because Brad's getting really good at delegation. Go on, please, please. Oh, there was just one task that has to get done every month, and I did it when it's been taking me six months now. I keep saying I'm going to tell Zana how to do it, but I just haven't got around to showing her, so I can't delegate yet because I haven't actually demonstrated what to do. It's a simple task, but it takes time, and I just haven't done it. So, once again, it takes me time when I shouldn't be doing it. And is it a task that Zana would possibly do better than you? She'll do it in three quarters of the time that it takes me. Yeah. Yes. Ah. 
here we go. This is, see, Brad is the role model. <laughs> oh, oh, no, 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 Brad, no, he's the role model of telling you exactly what's going on for all of you. Because that's what's going on for all of you. Is that right? Yes. Right? And Brad is owning it. You need to own it too. All right. And that's the thing. It's that he hasn't done it because he hasn't made or found or made the time to teach or train. And interesting, when reading your things, at the end of, at the end of all of this, I went, here is the root cause of why your time management and your delegation isn't where perhaps it could be. It's because of this. It's because you're not training and teaching your people along the way, which then leads to actually the root cause of, cause of it all is that, and that's why I said it up front, is that need to develop your people more. And not just develop your people more, develop more people. So not just develop a few people more, develop more people at less stuff as well. All right, cool. Can I just add to that? The, the, th the thing that you guys really need to consider is, I, I know the reason why my delegation skills were really, really poor, and it was most of the time because I had one, I had to teach everything that I basically learned in my McDonald's career myself. I can go into a course, no one taught me anything, they just said, but the licensees I've worked for in the past said, this needs to be done, I don't know how to do it, find out. And that's how I taught myself my whole job. And so I've never had people really demonstrating to me, so I've just had to learn all that kind of stuff myself. You guys have a whole team of people who have so much experience working as store managers or first assistants, whether they're here or in the Philippines, that you don't even utilise, and they already know what to do. So half the, half the things that you could delegate isn't because they don't know what, what to do. They actually know what to do, but you just haven't given them the power or the initiative to actually go ahead and do it. So your challenge is actually easier in terms of actually getting the accomplishment side of things because they'll be able to do it well for you and probably better. Uh, as I found out, like it took me seven or eight hours to do payroll and Zana takes two and a half. So people are more attuned to different things in different ways. I mean, obviously, from my point of view, I have a thousand other distractions happening along the way as, as well, and that's, that's part of it. But still, she's more attuned to that kind of stuff and I hated it, I've always hated payroll, and she quite enjoys doing it. So, why not pass this stuff on? You know, it's, it's the same thing for you guys, but you actually have teams of people who actually know what they're doing. You're just gonna find out what they know and what they don't know, but if you go through and you talk, to, especially in your department managers, most of them have, have been at a high level for a while and know lots of this stuff already. You may need to have to teach a few little bits and pieces or, or guide them the right way, but five, 10, 15 minutes is going to save you hours. Absolutely. I can understand it being different if you were a, you know, a store manager and all your team was green and you were starting out and no one knew what they were doing and all you're worried about is that they were giving you a good QSC and you'd do the rest, but you, none of you are in that position. None of your stores are in that position. So hand stuff over, because I can tell you that most of them are crying out to get more stuff because they don't want to just run shit, so they want to be able to do something else and contribute to the business as well. Don't have all the contribution yourself. <laughs> there we go. So, and that's the thing, when you don't delegate, you have too much work, you don't have time, you have more stress. And you have people in your, in your team, especially the managers, who feel like they're not contributing. Which is not great either, and then that actually makes your job harder too, when they feel like that. <coughs> All right, so let's have a look at the what and when, and it comes down to three things. Time, availability, and what we call criti criticality. All right, so you've got a whole bunch of notes in your, in your workbooks here, so let's just go through, go through it. All right, so the thing is, with what to delegate, a good question, as it says in here, is to ask, well, what can only you do? Or what is it absolutely vital that you do and not somebody, not somebody else? And if there are things that only you can do, make sure that you're delegating the rest, right? As much as you possibly as much as you possibly can. And when we say delegating, we're not just saying it's like Lisa gave an example of like cleaning the dining room. Okay, <coughs> we know the crew can do that. That's fine. So it's not just saying, hey, go and do this. That is delegation, but it's at a low level. So delegation is where you're giving them authority and where you're actually giving them the ability to make decisions on your behalf, on the business's behalf. All right, so 
It's, it's enabling them and granting them the authority to make decisions on your behalf. And I understand that you need to let, involves letting go of some control. Yeah. Actually, there's a slide on this later on, but I'll say it up front now. It, it means letting go of control, which most of you don't like doing, but it also means increasing your accountability, which most of you don't like doing. So you love holding on to the control, so you don't want to let it go. But when you let go of that control, your accountability and your responsibility actually increases when you delegate. And for some of you, you're going, oh, I'm not sure if I want that. But that's what you need to learn to embrace and go, but actually, it makes you more, more of a responsible person by enabling other people to make decisions. All right, so let's have a look at the time, first of all. So about having enough time to delegate. So it takes time to actually delegate. The time to train, the time to give instructions, the time to follow, to follow up. Um, and if you feel, who feels that they don't have time to delegate? Anyone? Sometimes, yeah. When you feel you don't have time to delegate, that's when you must find time to delegate. So if ever you're feeling like that, that's probably a really good signal that actually you better delegate. It's really the time. And I want you to have a look in your um, uh, quizzes that you, you, you did. So just have a look, because there's a couple of really interesting questions there around time. And by the way, I know you've got a score, a score for the, for the, the quizzes. Your score is your score, and it's not actually about that. It's about your thinking behind some of these, some of these things, all right? Okay, so with regards to question number two, and this is a really interesting one, where it was, I delegate things at the last minute. Now, some of you said never, and some of you said often, and some of you said very often, and some of you said sometimes. So tell me, why do you or don't you delegate things at the last minute? Yes. I don't delegate to the last minute because um, I don't want that person to fail. Because I'm a perfectionist, so when I delegate something, I, I want to make sure that person do it, you know, right. So um, for me, before I delegate a task, I will make sure that she knows what to do, and then um, she knows how to do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So. Alright, so you don't do it at the last minute because you don't want them to fail. Why else do some of you not delegate at the last minute? Go on, Alyssa. It's because uh, I plan, I wanted to make sure that if everything is organized. So if I would delegate to another person, I make sure that she will also have enough time to do it and then organize it. I saw you answering this based on the, the assumption that you've had plenty of time to do it in the first place. You know, something has come up question. quickly and you do need... Oh, I might jump in. No, 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 no for it. You're a perfect thing. Brad snapped a look at the, at the notes and the PowerPoint, so yeah, keep going. <laughs> but, you know, sometimes Let things happen that, need to listen that to actually needs to be done quickly, but you've only found out about it quickly too. Yeah. yeah. It's not all about that I've had, I've had three weeks to do this and I haven't done it and it's due in five minutes, so now I'm going to give it to someone else. Yeah. Sometimes you have five minutes to get something done. Will you then delegate to someone? Because most of you put sometimes or towards the not so often or rarely for that. And I think only one person put often or very often, which was Jackie. And it was interesting because you would think sometimes that it would be like, well, if you're saying I, I delegated the last minute very often, that that would score lower. Actually, that was the highest score for that, that, that question. And the thing is, if it, isn't something, if it is something urgent, you've got five minutes to do it or an hour to do it, and you need to get it done, you better delegate it. Or if it's something that only you can do, you better delegate everything else that is not only up to you so you can do that thing. So sometimes in those pressure moments and at that last minute, it's absolutely mm -hmm. vital to delegate. And that's where often you won't because you think it's hard, it's just too hard to delegate because you're so busy. And because you don't want them to fail and because you want it to be organized and all those other great reasons that you have, especially if you have more steel or more tempo. See, Dynamo Blaze over there and Blaze over here, you don't really have much problem delegating anything at any time to anybody. 
give it all away. Yeah. And I'll just stand here and all the people. Stand here and look good, <laughs> yeah. And stand here and because my team feels good, right? But and wouldn't it take yeah. time? Wouldn't it take longer though if you delegate this? But what's the task? It depends. Yeah. It depends. And the answer the is it depends. And these questions, most of them, there's no black and white answer because it does depend on the situation. It does depend on the situation. And that's where I, I was saying, Faye, that if it's something that only you can do, meaning that they don't have the skills to do it, then delegate everything else that you've got so that you get that done. But if they do, delegate that, that task. But regardless, at that last minute, delegation of some sort to achieve everything that needs to happen absolutely needs to, needs to occur. Yes, and because, um, for me, I don't mind um, like a person giving me a task on the last minute, but it's more of me thinking how would other feel if I give it to them on the last minute. It, that's really a problem. Yes. Yeah. Thinking um, they might not do good in that because they might feel that um, there's a time constraint or they're not given like ample time to do it. I think the thing you've also got to think of, and I think when people are talking about delegation, you're thinking these massive tasks that are going to take all this time to do. Sometimes it is only a two-minute job that needs to be done, but someone else can do it. That's right. And so it's, it's not about failing that's because right. this is a big thing that needs to get done. But you know, I, I want to get the sales figures in five minutes. Can you do it? Well, okay, I'm going to go to the computer and do that instead of talking to this customer. Or can you delegate someone to go and get the sales figures for you? And so I, I think it's when you're talking about it, yeah. I think you're thinking delegation because it's, it's huge and it's not it's huge. It's both, it's all the little things. And Lisa, like Lisa was talking about that, they're delegating to a crew person to go do something because Lisa cleaning that table, like, okay, yes, it was quick and easy, but like when she could have sent the crew person, okay, it takes another five seconds to go, hey, fabulous crew person, can you please go and clean the dining room? Meaning you don't have a choice, go clean the dining room, but you say it nicely, right? So that takes five seconds, so that then Lisa can go talk to the crew person over there whose uniform isn't looking so good, or is about to do something dangerous, or actually we need to, she needs to tell another three crew people to do and, and clean the fry, jobs. clean the fry area, go mop the floor, um, you know, whatever you go on break. Think about it. Lisa, what can you achieve in the same time that that task is going to be completed. Because even if you do and in that five minutes that someone else can do a task, you can achieve so much. You more. can do another three things, then you should be delegating. Mm. Yeah. So and, and like that scenario there, there's four conversations yep. compared to one clean table. That's right. Oh, she's <coughs> fast. She's clean five. Because okay. <laughs> five customers just got out from there just then, didn't they? <laughs> right. So she's fast, but you know, absolutely, Brad's exactly right. And the yeah. thing is, there are people possibly that can do the job without training or support or anything, and then just getting someone to do it if you, if they can, you can do that too. So it doesn't need time unnecessarily to delegate. I just want to um, bring up. And this is why this is going to take more than one session because the discussion is absolutely vital. When we put all the information together, I nah, there's going to be there's a half day workshop. workshop at least. But I think this is the key to this group where, you, where you stand right now. There's is. nothing more important than this at the moment because it affects your time management, which is obviously really important to this group. But you get this right, a lot of pressure comes off you, absolutely. and a lot of things get done, and a lot of results are achieved. And Take it from someone people. who has failed at this miserably for 20 odd years, okay? It's, it's only in the last 10 that I've really got my act together and really started to find out that I can achieve so much more by doing so much less myself. And it's probably the next slide with all, how, all the different things you yeah. could delegate is really key. Absolutely, I'll get to that in just a sec. One thing I do want to bring, because this was a common thread too, um, is, and I, sh I, sh I should probably put it up here, that Shalane said, just, I don't mind if people delegate to me at the last minute. Like, if, you know, Rose or Brad or Faye or someone says, hey, this needs to be done now, she'll drop everything and do it and not feel bad. But she worries that her asking another manager or a crew person to do something, that they'll feel bad. Who else feels like that? And quite a few of you can put up your hands. I know you definitely can. Um, yeah, Michelle? Yeah, well, yeah, now, great. Who feels bad the other way? If someone comes to you and asks you to do something, how, how, how many of you feel bad that you've been asked to do something under a constraint or some description? Or do you embrace it? Come here. Actually, 
maybe would feel it like, oh yeah, they they're interesting me that I can do it in such a short time. How many, how many do you feel that way? Do you know what? The majority of the other people will feel exactly the same. That's why I brought it up. When hearing going, I feel I feel all right when I'm asked to do and I, you mentioned it the last minute, but you're talking about anything. But yet you worry that they're gonna feel bad. What you are doing is taking away their power, taking away their contribution, taking away their value. You feel good when you get asked to do something. Give your people that same gift. Right? That is a gift. You feel good about it. Make your people feel good. Because when you don't ask them to do stuff, they don't feel good about it. They don't feel trusted. And then, when you finally do go and ask them to do something, that's when they'll go, mm hmm <laughs> Because it's like, you haven't trusted me before on a zillion other things, or you've got someone else to do it, and now you're asking me? That's when they get a bit, yeah? Yeah, give them the gift. And like any gifts, they'll accept it. And if it doesn't fit right, right, or it's not an appropriate gift, they'll go exchange it. So if it's not appropriate, you'll know. And I'll go, oh, thanks, but it didn't fit well. And you'll go, oh, okay, they need more training, or I need to give more instruction, or maybe I should have split it into two, or maybe I should have given them something else. So it's just like a gift. All right, let's move on. Okay, ah, uh, no, 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 we can't move on yet. Sorry. Availability and criticality. So, availability. Just have a quick read of those notes. Let me move this again. All right, so this is what we've just been talking about, about people who have the right skills. You know, obviously that's, that's easier. And if it's day-to-day -day stuff, they're probably closer to it than you are anyway. So they're highly likely to do it even at a, at a, higher, at a better level. And the, the last one is criticality. So it's like, if the work is critical to the results and the success, and it's a high profile task, then look at it and go, can I delegate? Can I not delegate this at that particular point in time? And there was a question about that on your, um, on your survey about delegating, you might like to have, just have a look at that, about delegating tasks critical, which one is that? Number nine. Uh, number nine. Delegate work that is critical to the success of a project. And it's interesting, only a couple of you said often, and the rest were sometimes um, yeah, rarely and, and not at all. So once again, it's okay to delegate things that are critical, if you're delegating to the right person and the right, the right, the right part. And remember, you don't have to delegate an entire thing. It might be a portion of something, a portion of a task that is critical to the success. Where someone can still support you while you're holding on to, if you need to, the most important part. Well, like I, I do really often. Critical. Some of the really important stuff, which I know that really I should be sending off to Terry or sending off to head office. If I've got someone to do it, Final check comes from me. That's right. So whilst I don't do the legwork, I do the final approval and send it through. Not claiming credit or anything like that, it's just something that needs to be sent off. But in my knowledge, when it goes, I know that it's right. So my five minutes of checking compared to an hour of doing the work to get it right, is far beneficial to me to do that. So you, you're stepping, you, you're not you know, handed over and then have nothing else to do with it. Your job may be to give it to them, to pass to you, and then when you're comfortable with it, you can send it. Sorry. And you tweak it, you finish it off or review or whatever. And what Brad's just explained beautifully is that whole let go of control, but actually increase Brad's accountability because he's still accountable for still it. Still my name on it, I send it. Absolutely. And I, and I might need to ask, answer questions based on it later on and head office come back to you, so. Yeah. So um, that's really, really important. And as you said at the bottom there, if it is critical, then find more of your lower level work to delegate so that you're still delegating something. So if there's something that you can't delegate, realise that there's something else you must delegate so that you can focus on it. Yep, all right, cool. All right, so let's have a look at the when to delegate. Is that the next? All right, and we've well, got the, some... The, the, um, this is kind of like the what's. 
Yeah, the what's and the, and the when's. Yeah, yeah, what's and when's. So the thing is, when you're delegating, we've got, we've got some notes on that too. You're like, is it a little task? If it's a little task, delegate it. If it's a tedious task, delegate it. If it's a time-consuming task, um, then break it down to lots Brad of people. Said. Exactly what yeah. Brad said. Delegate it. Can you teach someone? Then delegate it. Or you might delegate parts at a time. Teach someone one part of it if it's too big. They can do the first part or the middle part or the end part, whichever is easiest and most appropriate to teach. They can do part of it. And then the next time, add a bit more to it. Add a bit more to it. You know how training works. You don't tra train someone on everything all at once. You do it in bite-sized chunks. So it's exactly the same with your delegation. If it's something that you're terrible at, so terrible, if you're terrible at it, or if it's just not in your flow, your natural flow, so still people, yeah, delegate some of the other, you know, recruitment and people stuff, you know, people, people stuff to other people. That's okay. And if it's time sensitive or it's got, you've got different planning aspects, Delegate different parts of it so that it can all come all come together and be achieved. That's very, very important. Yeah. Just with the when to delegate, so if you just go back a page in your note in your notebooks there from those tips. So I want you just to have a look at those five five points there on the when to delegate and just put just an underline or highlight or whatever the parts that are really appropriate for you that you need to take note of that you don't consider as well as you would. Lisa, have you got your work there? Oh, Jason. Jason, Jason's got your work. Jason's doing your work for you. Good, good delegation, Lisa. <laughs> does not mean that you have to learn to do it all the aspects of your role yourself and become excellent at them before you delegate aspects of your role okay right and I know because you want to learn and be good at everything don't you and I know this is an issue so hearing Harold say that really prompted me to, to do that so the thing is for you to get fast at being excellent at your job the more parts of your job you delegate to someone else the actual better assistant VM and VM you will be. Because you will become proficient by, you might not be able to train the other person, they actually may have more skill than you. And Abby, I know you've said to me a couple of times, you know, with cafe and stuff, some of the people have got more skill than you. That's okay. You want them to have more skill than you. That's what you want. If you're the best at everything, you've done something Wrong. You've got a big opportunity. The whole thing is to get everybody else being, in total, being better than you at everything. So you either teach them some parts, or you learn together, or you get you delegate to them because they can do the task, and they actually share information, and you learn through them, through them. Um, and actually, I've, I've got to say that's when I became um, a, a store manager. Um, that was exactly how I ran my store. Some people did complain to me, go, you don't do very much. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, but look at our results, right? But I, I was doing lots, but I just did lots of talking. Talk, 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 share, 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 share. 
observe, observe, share, share, learn, learn, give me the information. Honestly, if we're getting other results and everything's coming in, I'm not going to question what you're doing. No. No. And that's the thing. It was actually that everybody was stepping up and I was doing what? I was doing none of the stuff that they were doing because I was busy teaching and delegating and following up. And yes, I did some of the doing too. But that's how we got the results in the store. Um, so yeah, even if you're not proficient at it yet yourself in your new role, delegate it anyway. You'll actually learn by delegating. Because, because the key thing is you have to be able to follow up. So you've got to learn along the way so you can follow up appropriately. So you don't actually have to do the task, you just have to learn all about it so you can follow up and know whether you've got the results and how they actually occur. Alrighty. Any questions on that? Oh, okay, awesome. Alrighty. So can I just... Yeah, sure. So who thinks that it's actually like, you're actually lazy if you're not doing all this kind of stuff? Who has that in the back of their mind? Patrick, thank you. Abby, yep. Paolo would be another one. Anyone else? No? Shalane? Okay. Cool. So. Well, it explains why you don't. Yeah, that's right. So it's like, it's interesting, and if we can just, you know, for a few little wires down, like the whole thing, no, actually, they feel better when you delegate to them. Or actually, no, I'm not being lazy. So it's just, let's just flip the switch. You're actually not being lazy. You're just doing something else instead of doing all of those doing to things. You're still doing just as much. You're just doing different things. I'll ask you the other question. Why do you think you should work harder than anybody else in the restaurant? Do you get paid significantly more than the person next to you or below you? Not really. So I, I don't think the amount of work that some of you try and take on is a reflection of what you get paid compared to the person in a department manager role or a little bit less. You know, a junior manager, that's different, they get paid significantly less and, and some of your crew are, but it, and it works the, same, the other way around. Why should you be doing something that someone at $8 an hour can be doing? Why would I be paying you? And let's, well, in this room, no one's getting paid less than twenty-seven dollars an hour. Why would I pay you twenty-seven dollars an hour to do something that someone at eight dollars an hour could do? Ask that to that value, 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 value that we talked about last time. And I know that flipped a switch in every single person's head. It was like, oh, what value am I adding? And by doing those, lower, by not delegating, what value am I taking away from the business? Yeah, that, that's going back to the one that we're talking about with Lisa and cleaning the table. Well, yeah, there might be a time where you have to do that, but if you don't have to do it, and you've got five people standing at front counter who are all being paid eight dollars an hour to do it, then they should be doing it, and you shouldn't feel bad about it because that's they're getting paid for the job that they're required to do. We're not asking them to run a store at eight dollars an hour. We're asking you guys to run a store at twenty-seven dollars an hour. So that's what you should be doing. Okay. Cool. All right, so ooh, I think most of you feel pretty, from your surveys, you feel pretty good about choosing who to delegate to. Yeah? All right. Now, there's a couple of things, though, that I do want to go through with the who. Um, delegating to anyone in the organization if you think they could do the job. So that requires a little bit of exploration Exploration here. So those of you that said often or very often, are you talking about only within your team or are you talking outside your team as well? So when you answered that question, when it said anyone within the organisation, I want to know what did you take that to mean? Guys and girls, need an answer. Question number seven. 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 
So when it says I delegate to anyone in the organisation, I figure could do the work. All right? Cool. So I want to know what was your thinking around that question and your answer? Anyone in the team? And what do you mean by team, Shalane? Okay, great. All right, so you're looking at that within your store, within your team. Who else looked at it like that? Jason, how did you look at it? Okay, you looked at it as the whole Swan Star Organization. Who looked at it as the whole Swan Star Organization? Okay, who thought of it as in within my store? Okay, about half, half. All right, cool. That's all I wanted, all I wanted to know. So in Swan Star, do you, if you can delegate to people in other stores, and who does that? Who does that at this point in time? Because you answered it, <laughs> right? Right. Awesome job. Glad Brad does. That's really important. Oh, Terry will be happy. <laughs> Abby, you obvious, obviously, because you work across multiple multiple stores. Now, there may be times when you can actually delegate to people outside your store. Yet in most cases, you would only delegate to people within your store, correct? Yeah, yeah. So with the um, actual organisational structure, so I want you just to read that on, what's it, page seven. organisation, there may be opportunity to delegate out, but make sure you include that, that's where that chain of communication is absolutely vital, so that everyone knows what's going on, and you're not stepping on, not stepping on toes, but also that you're not stepping on responsibility that people have already, already, yeah, so that's, that's really important, important to know. The other thing is, is and with your other department managers and assistant department managers too, do they just delegate within their department or do they delegate out of their department too? Sorry? Mainly within. Mainly within the department, yeah. So the thing is, because you wanna make sure when you're choosing who, one, that they've got the skills or you can teach them the skills, but two, that they haven't got too much on their plate already. Yeah. So I want you to think about the people that you delegate to in your stores and have a think about, do you delegate to sort of the same people most of the time? <coughs> For results, Patrick, yeah. go on, explain, explain what happens, how that works. Um, with the uh, spear, we always delegate. Uh, a lot of times, I always delegate tasks. I'm green. Yes, I pass. Uh, <laughs> Absolutely. And now that we've got a team in each store too, VMs, who does that? Here you go, here you go, here you go. Yeah? Rose, you delegate quite a bit to Shalane. The department has a chili. But I don't really feel like she's delegating everything to me because more than that, like she would really utilize the department heads and the assistant department. Yeah. She, she's really good in delegating. Oh. <laughs> Yeah. Sorry, I, Rose, I put you on the spot, and Rose said that in her survey too, yeah. that she was really good at delegating. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> no, you didn't say you were really good. You said you don't have a problem with delegating. Yeah. Yeah, so <laughs> Rose did acknowledge that. But and that's really and actually it's really important. If you are good at delegating, it's it's good to acknowledge that you are. That's that's awesome. No, for me it's because um now she's gonna take it away from this. <laughs> Um, it's good if you um, let other people to make mistakes, to make stupid decisions, because I've made a lot of stupid decisions and um, I learn from it. And I don't, you know, I mean, I mean, I make ones, I make sure I'm not repeating. So how will they learn if they don't make stupid decisions as well? Do we need I want to, them to make stupid do we, decisions. Do we need that to be repeated? Probably. Can we record that and put it on repeat over and over and over and over and over so that you understand that? Uh, what is it? What did you say? Let people make stupid decisions and mistakes. And not just stupid mistakes. So let them fail. Let, let, them, and learn. let them learn. And it's not just fail or make mistakes. Yeah. Don't let them go and you know burn the store down. No. <laughs> let, let your job is to supervise and coach and to watch yeah. over them, but let them try it. First, they're not too much they can do that is actually going to cause that much damage to make a mistake yeah. which you can't fix. But if you're, you know, if closing something off and it becomes permanent, well, you let them go to the point before it needs to be closed off, and then you step in, you have a look, and then you can give feedback one way or another. Absolutely. And not just let them make the stupid mistakes, let them make stupid decisions. That's critical. The whole point of delegation is not just to tell them and let them go do something, it's let them make decisions and be involved in the thought process and the decision making process because that's how they're going to contribute the most. Yeah. Now, Who goes yeah. home and worries about what's happening in the store because you're not there? I worry about that. <laughs> Rose. <laughs> but that's just Rose. That's it's just an irrational. No three. Guess what? You're making decisions all the time. Let them make more decisions. How many times does the store burnt down? Think about that. How, many, how many times have you walked in and found that your drive through is at 85% and you weren't there? Yeah. It happens, doesn't it? Yeah. You've got good people. Mm. So don't be afraid to let them run with you. <coughs> and you'll work out the ones that you need to spend more time with and develop them. And the juniors and the ones who are learning the ropes. But you've got a lot of experienced ones, so let them run with it. Make your jobs easier. If you're sitting at home wondering, oh, what's going on today because I'm not there, then you haven't done your job. Or you're paranoid. <laughs> yeah, she's probably paranoid. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah before I used to, it gets my off, I used to go to the store for a surprise visit. That's before. That's like, that's like a couple of years ago, Elisa <laughs> spent 30 hours a day to school. Didn't you? That was awesome. There's only 24 hours in a day, somehow she managed to be there for 30. Yeah, and even if she wasn't hours. inside, even if she wasn't inside the store, I think she was parked outside the store just waiting to just That's go before. back in. That's before. That's before. That's what I'm saying. It's a before and after shot, right? Look at her now. More, much more relaxed. It actually doesn't do anyone any favours, including yourself. <clears throat> and the biggest thing is you're not allowing the person to grow and learn if you don't let go of control and allow them to experience the mistakes and all that kind of stuff, that's how we learn. If you don't let them have those mistakes and things, you actually create... The whole thing, you, you don't grow yourself, you don't grow people below you. No. Correct. Because why would I... If I turn around and say, well, I, I want another supervisor, well, if I've got no one to replace the next store manager who's to come out and do that, well, then I'll go without a supervisor first. So you're actually hampering your own development. Or the same for an <coughs> assistant restaurant manager. If you're not developing someone to come and replace you, when the opportunity becomes for another store manager when we get another store, well, you're not going to be chosen if there's not a replacement. And I might have to go back the other way and tell Faye she has to go and run a store instead. <laughs> She's now going to develop someone up very quickly. <laughs> I was a project manager in financial services and there was another guy, we used to run similar projects with different products and I was always frustrated because he'd get to start these projects and then he'd get to go on to the next one 
and I'd get stuck implementing right to the bitter end. And the thing is, he was very good at delegating. He always put a 2IC that was better than him in the role of managing the project. And he could get off as soon as he got past the interesting bit, which was the same for me. I wanted to get off, but I couldn't. But that was in that he had someone that could take on and he could step up and do something for him. And, you know, that was a hard lesson that I had to learn because I kept wanting to control everything. I said, if you don't let them fail and stuff, they end up thinking they can't do it without you. And that brings fear and means they don't make decisions and they don't contribute. Now, we've got a little guest here. Now, all of you, including CJ, learned how to walk. How many times did you fall down and cry and fall down and cry or try to stand up and not be able to and kept on crawling? Some of them do that now on the weekend. Yeah. Quite regularly. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> different circumstances. <laughs> the thing is, if, as, if, if you don't encourage them to keep trying and keep failing, the baby's just going to crawl forever and never stand up and never walk. And even when they can walk, they will fall over from times. And then they learn to climb as well. You know, it's like next step, next step, next step. Otherwise, you're just reducing yourself to a whole bunch of, of you know, they stand but they're afraid to walk because they might fall over. Let them fall over. <coughs> and if they get injured or they cry, you know, encourage them, whatever, fix whatever needs to be fixed, move the block out of the way so they don't trip over it next time. But then let them go again. It's exactly the same. All right, um, one last thing with the who. So we've talked about the organisational structure. Is who do, how many of your people have, have actually too much delegated to them? Have you got people that, it's the same people that are delegated to all the time in your stores? Who's got that happening? Maybe you're that person. Or maybe you're that person. <laughs> <laughs> maybe not because you're still busy doing it all yourself. Maybe. <laughs> Just consider when you're delegating what else has been delegated to that person and how much they actually have on their plate as well. All right? Um, because it may be that you might need to include somebody else. Or if you do need that task to be delegated to that person, then help them and remind them that they need to let go of something else to be able to do what you've delegated. So it might just mean that They've been delegated to, which means they must delegate one of their lower level jobs to somebody else. So start developing your managers in those ways in those ways as well. When you're giving them something, help them let go of something else. Help them make that decision. So that then they can they're not just swamped, because otherwise they're just gonna be like many use. Each of you. And and your ability to delegate will be lessened because they'll be overloaded. And that's when they may that's when you may not trust trust them because they actually have too much on their plate again. Or when your expectations aren't met. Yeah. Alright. Cool. Now just conscious of time. I think I think we might actually have to leave this one. Obviously that comes down to their skills and stuff. We'll come back to that next time and we'll come back to the talent dynamics mm. next time too. Where's the how? Just with the how to delegate, um, because we will finish off, off pretty soon, um, is just, ah, here we go. The most important, actually you tell me, you tell me, no, no, I just want to ask you, how do you go about delegating? If you're going to delegate something to someone, I'm not talking about a low level task like group person cleaning, cleaning this or doing that, so a bigger task, as part of your you know, department, department head, assistant, BM, BM role, how do you go about the delegating? You've chosen the person, you know what it is, how do you actually get that message across and get them to start doing what you want them to on your behalf? What's the process? Because that's the how. Uh, basically, I, I, I ask them, have you tried doing this before? So it's going to be a, 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 a very responsibly quicker. Okay. 
uh, you can expect them to, to complete the task uh, as fast as, as they can if, if let's say, they've experienced um, doing that, that certain task. Okay. And then, so if they say yes, then, then uh, so, uh, can you please complete this for me? All right, cool. So it's checking a bit on the skill on the skill level. How else? What are the really important points that you have to get across to people when you're delegating? Um, sometimes I would check like, like the eagerness of the people, their commitment towards the work. Like, are we in the same page? Are we are aiming the same goals when I delegated this task? Yeah. Because um, in the I, I think that it's not necessary that um, we delegate tasks to people that already know what to do. It's more even those that don't have the skill yet, but is that eager and is very much willing to do it. Mm -hmm. Yep. So willingness and on the same page. Yes. That's critical. If you're not trusting the person, and you know that they've got the skill and you think that your expectations won't be met means that you haven't done an adequate job of checking that you're on the same page. Really, really important there. Yeah. How else? What else is really important with the way that you delegate? And I want to add to um, Charlene about attitude because for me, it matters to me. So for me, I don't care if you're like the best, say, you know what to do. But if your attitude is not in it, it matters to me. I would rather teach someone like, who's a neophyte or something, because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I really don't care. If you're not <coughs> in it, then get out. <laughs> That's for me, because um, cause I love to train. So I would rather um, my protege, whoever knows what I know, because I'm not selfish like that. So mm -hmm. I want to know, I want to teach that person what I know. And, and obviously, and even let that person think on his own as well, and that person can be better than me. So attitude matters to me. So like say, for me, in terms of Shalane, just an example. So Shalane obviously transferred from O'Connor, and obviously we've heard good things about her in O'Connor. Mm -hmm. But then when she went to Melville, obviously, um, they didn't want to give Shalane. But then I didn't know her, she just came, and then I'm like, when I saw her, and. Her attitude was really good, so I kind of like added a bit more extra in training her. But obviously, it didn't want to be like <clears throat> not because she was my favorite, but because it mattered to me. <laughs> what she's saying is that you weren't the favorite, right? Nobody was favorite, is what Faye's saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But the thing so, was, because why would I? Why would I, and I don't care if I was accused, you know, whoever, what, because I was accused that Rose was my favorite. The thing was because Rose and Paul were my favorites, but I'm like, I don't care. You were the first. You were the first. You were the first favorite, but not the most recent favorite. There we go. Yeah, yeah, I heard stuff about But that's true, I heard stuff about like, oh, you know, you don't tell off Rose and Paul, I'm like, well, we talk about stuff, and why would I tell them off when, well, you know, we, we, we're like... But if you do tell someone off, you don't go and tell everyone else that you told someone off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, 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 well, well, you want me to shout to Rose in front of everyone just because, you know, you feel better? Yeah, yeah like, no. <laughs> no. And besides, because we have, uh, when we work together, we have that, like, I don't know, we have the, like, same wavelength kind of thing. Um, so, like, we knew kind of, like, what to do, etc., etc. And yeah, so you were the first first of the <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, well, and attitude is one of the most important things. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah, that <laughs> willingness, that on the same page, that eagerness, as soon as you see that in someone, yeah, grab see, them. It yeah. doesn't matter about their experience level, grab them. And yeah. in saying that though, is if you're delegating to the same person all the time because they've got that, is that that's when there is a risk as well. Of, and like we can joke about it here about going where everyone's going all Bruce with the favourite and now she's not the favourite because Shalane's the favourite. You know, he's like, yeah, and Jason's going, oh, I'm never going to be the favourite. You know? <laughs> 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 Did I be correctly just said that? <laughs> oh, I haven't even added Harold yet. Oh, <laughs> Second emotion. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no. And because like for Harold, he has he had he had like
like a it took me a while to understand Harold. <laughs> yeah. No, be, no, 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 yeah, because Harold had a different style. Like, yeah. Harold, Harold, how do you say it? Harold doesn't talk about stuff he's going to do. You have to get it out of him. So he would do stuff on his own and he will let you know. Sometimes he doesn't. Um, and that's one of his opportunities. <laughs> but that was the time when he was my first, but now he's a restaurant manager. Yeah. Now I'm going to interrupt Say here, right? Because like everyone loves each other and that's all great, right? The thing is, is that if you're finding that you've got a favorite and only because like you delegate them to, to them a lot, it's like find the opportunity to have more favorites. Lots of people. Because once again, that lifts everybody's morale and also means that you actually have more, more people that love you because you're delegating to them, more people that love everybody because you're delegating to lots of people. And everyone feels like they're the favorite, but not as, not I'm more favorite than you, but everyone feels that they're important and special. And that's what you're after. I think when people turn around and say such, such the favorite, that's more, it says more about the person who says that. Yeah. than the actual person that's involved. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, that's and, true. And, and we've had a classic example here of a couple of the guys who got promoted yeah. into management recently, and the other area leaders around them all went off about how such and such is a favourite with Asi being promoted and Elise being promoted. But they were the best people for the job. And that's why they might say their favourite, rather than asking, well, what should I do to be them? Their first reaction is, well, they're just a favourite and they're always going to get looked after. But people become favourites because they can do the job and you, they're your go-to people. And, and they're, they're not necessarily perceived as favourites and looked after or got any more attention other than you rely on them, you expect them to get certain things done and that's why people grow and develop. Is that, is, that's what it's all about. So I think it says more about the people who say such and such is a favourite than it is. I don't think you know, favourites necessarily exist. It's in the eye of no, 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 someone else who right is a little bit disgruntled by not actually doing the same thing that the person who actually got promoted did or whatever the case may be, you know. I'd be asking myself the question, well, how come they got it over me and what do I need to do to take that next step? But people don't do that. And, it, and you can, so be careful that you don't choose the people to delegate to because they're more like you as well. So, and because that can happen. Yeah. And that's the where opportunity people go favouritism, whether it is or not, it's, you know enough about the about talent dynamics. I know you crew and you know you crew haven't done that, but you get a good feel for what they are and you know enough about the behaviours and everything to, to go, okay, are they like me, are they not like me? And to and to be able to put that aside now and actually embrace the differences, which I know you actually all have that ability, but make sure that, that extends to your delegation and to the crew whose profile you don't actually know. But you know that embracing those uniquenesses and those differences are really important. Just, be, as, just before we wrap up, there's a couple uh, of... Can I just... Yeah, sorry. go, Brad. Um, because I think it's important that you, you do evaluate everyone's performance when you start making these decisions. And, yep. and, um, and I know we sort of just did that little bit of a joke there with, with Jason, but at the end of the day, if we looked at Jason eight years ago... Jason. Yeah. <laughs> Don't even get me started. <laughs> sorry, <but. laughs> <laughs> Jason would not have made it on our list of people who was going to be a future store manager. And I don't think he minds me saying, because Terry's told him enough. Well. Yeah. But, but his ability and his capabilities and his demonstration over time has shown us he's more than capable of doing the job. And that's why he's actually running the store when he's not, not actually ready. You know, he hasn't done our LP yet. We have people in our organisation who have done our LP. Um, but he's running a store because he's capable. And that's what you got to look for. It doesn't matter how long someone's been in the business for. If someone's been doing it 30 years or someone's been doing it six months. The people with the best ability and demonstrate uh, the right talents are the ones that get promoted over time. And I think if you look at it across our organisation, you'll see that. It's, it's definitely not length of service. You know, if we did length of service, there will be people in positions who certainly wouldn't be warranted having them. It's about ability at the right time when the opportunities become available. And that's what happened with Jason. And what's well, happened with everyone, really, at the end of time. So, you know, some people have had to wait a little bit longer than others, you know, had to show, you know, for whatever reason, have had to show their capabilities a different way and, and have to shine a different way. But you're all here because of what you've proven to us over time. Um, some quicker than others. Uh, but that's what you've got to be doing with your crew now. 
I guess that, you know, we should be finding more people to come through right now. We've got to find the right crew in our organisation. Sometimes we have the best crew and their availability don't suit, so we can't consider them. But do we talk to them about it? Because sometimes they might, might be able to open up if they actually knew what was on the cards yeah. for them. But, you know, we've got to have people coming through because we still want to grow. And that means more people have to be coming through as well. So it doesn't stop. And if, and if you're not delegating and you're not coaching and you're not trying to find these people from crew all the way through to be able to take your job or, or take someone else's job so that they can then move up, it doesn't mean that you get replaced. It means there's more opportunities for you when that comes along. And, and you know, hopefully we, we say that in one star, but for some of you it may be a case of, well, I've got as far as I can go and, you know, I'm not planning on going anywhere and I don't think Terry's going to get rid of me anytime soon. And someone wants my job, well, we might need to find you another organisation to do that. And that's fine too. Because that's all part of growth and development, but you should always be, your, your priority should be finding people to replace you. Because in the process, your job's going to be easier. Yep. A lot, a lot easier. Absolutely. So, what I wanted with your um, quizzes, the one about, hmm. ah, question four. I provide directions at the start of the project and wait for expected results at the agreed end point. Now, this was something that overall um, the score was was lower on for all of all of you. Now, it's a bit of a trick. It's well, it, it misses out some stuff, and it's interesting with these questions. That's why it's a discussion point. Is who provides input at the start of the thing that they're delegated? All of you? Yeah? Okay. All right. And then at the end, you wait for the expected results. What happens in the middle section? How do you manage it in the middle section between the, I'm delegating this to you at the end, at the start, and here's the end point where I want to finish it off or look at the results. Tell me, how do you delegate or manage it in the middle bits? Because that's critical. Jason. I, um, I'll give them the direction and then I'll... I'll sort of just, depends on the person, but generally, my, speaking my department managers, I will just tell them the result, what I want, and then I'll let them, I'm like, you guys, like, like for example, Kui, I'm like, Kui, I want this, and then he'll go off and do that, and then I'll wait for the end result, and just see, like, how he, but, like, basically, just, usually he gives the result, but pretty much just letting him think for himself and letting him do it for me. Yeah, great. Who does that? Where you let them determine exactly how to get the results? Anyone else do it like that? Melissa sometimes? Yeah, and then I do follow up along the way, so I don't have to wait at the end line. Mm -hmm. So it's more on like targets versus the results. So I give them the targets and then how are they going to go about it? And then in the middle part, then I'm showing them how are we doing well and how are we improve. Yeah. Okay, it's so important that you check in, that you have checkpoints, depending on the length of the task, but obviously if it's a longer task, that you have checkpoints, agreed upon checkpoints. And I know, Shalane, I know you were saying sometimes you want to follow up on them every two seconds, but you don't want to interfere. And some of you probably follow up too often on the person and they feel like, I'm not trusted. That's so yeah, <laughs> yeah, which over the time people just don't just do it yourself then that's because that's what they get, get to. That's right. So if you've got issues with expectations or trust, you could be micromanaging as well, where you're checking in on them so often that they're like, well, they don't trust me. Just why don't you do it yourself? So if you see where the organisation's gone, we're asking for a lot of reporting these days. That's in lieu of us having to do the checking up and following up because we want you to come to us and tell us what you're doing. Mm. And I know everyone gets oh, another report, you know, another VM is going to do the VM report this week. But that's about us finding out in a big plan that's running our business what's going on each week. Yeah. So we don't have to come and ask you a thousand odd questions. Mm -hmm. We'll ask you the questions that we don't get the answer to from your report or we have something else that's come up along the way. But when we don't talk to you a lot when these reports come through, that's because we're getting the information that we need and we know you've got things in hand and we're just leaving you alone. So I know some people have queried the amount of reports that we're asking our department managers to do and, and the BMs to do and, and that type of stuff and reporting like your labour's on track every day and all that kind of stuff. But that's to avoid us having to go to you. So it, that's the checkpoint mm -hmm. for us. And it's taken us a long while to put those types of things in place. But it is 
while some of you might think that's onerous, it is actually from us putting us at peace that we know things are going on okay, and we'll only go and ask the questions when we think that there's something relevant to ask out of that. So don't think a no response means that they're not paying attention. We're paying attention, but we're actually trying to leave it in your hands as much as possible, and especially, like I said a few weeks ago, that the goal of you know, where we want to go from a, a BM team's point of view is that you guys run the store every day with very little involvement from us. Because we've been too heavy handed. So when you're determining those checkpoints, if you can do it as part of setting the start, right? We're going to check in here, here, and it might be a time frame, it might be a length of time, or it might be when particular milestones are met in that task that you're delegating as well. Alright? The other thing is, and Jason explained it very well, he's going, I want this result, but then allows Cooey to go about it in his own way. Now, depending on the person's skill level, depends on how much you allow that. But if they're skilled, let them do that rather than going, I want you to achieve this, and now let's talk about how you're gonna do it or I'm gonna tell you how to do it. Because once again, then that just shuts off the thinking. The thinking, and then if something comes up and they haven't thought about it themselves right up front, they're not gonna be able to make necessarily an appropriate decision at different points and they'll come running back to you or not at all and that's when things you know go down on an epic fail so, so if, it, if it is a bigger task that's where you ask them yeah. to uh, tell me how you're going to do it by putting yeah. in an action plan what steps are you going to take uh, sound me out if there's anything that you want to go otherwise it's your project but I, I do want to know what you're doing and how you're going about it at the same time you want to make sure that they're going to do everything by the book too yeah you know, it, it may not be the way that you would have gone about it yourself but you don't want them to be breaching Absolutely. Labor not. rules and that kind of stuff because they think it's the right thing to do. We want to make, you know, that's where you might need to guide. But let's get them report. Get them report, get them to tell you rather than you having to ask them. So you establish that at the start, especially if it's a bigger thing. Okay, this is a project, this is what I want you to go away, to go away and do. The first step is buy such and such a tie and come back with your action plan of how you're going to achieve it. And we're going to sit down for 15 minutes and just talk through that. And I'll give you any input that I need or I'll give you. I can slow them to go and do whatever you need to do to get it done. And when you're talking with them, get them to set their time frames as well, if you can. Because um, usually people will know better how they can do things or what time they need to take. Or, and if they don't, what you're learning is whether they're overly optimistic, whether they're not, and they also then consider what else they've got on to make that decision. So it's not just left up to you to say, sometimes you have to, what, we need this done by a certain time. Then it's about asking, well, what other things have you got on that might stop you doing that? As much as you can, get them to tell you the how, not you telling them the how. Get there, the whole leaders, when we talk about listening, leaders talk last, get the input from them first before you go, and I also want to make sure that you do this, or and remember this, if that's if that's necessary. All right, so those checkpoints along the way are really, really important, and that's something um, that follow up along the way that across the organisation we can still we can still work on. All right? And obviously, you know, that, that follow up. The other thing was just with regards to the consequences. So some of you said that you do talk about consequences up front and some of you don't. And when I say consequences, that's not necessarily a bad word, all right? That can be the positive consequences or the negative consequences of something happening or not. So looking at what might go wrong, looking about what happens if, if it does go wrong. So letting them know when it is that you might step in. Like, I'm gonna let you go, go do it, come ask me, come ask me, I'm gonna check in here, I want you to come to me, if there's a few criteria that you want them to come to you, if this happens, come to me. If you're stuck on this, come to me. Right, so to give them the responsibility of coming to you too, and obviously if they need, if they're not doing that, then you may need to go to them. But let them know how that's actually going to work. So that's the consequences along the way and also at the end of the project or the, the task as to what happens if it's great and also what happens if it's if it's not great and the way that that's going to be managed. That's really important that they know that up front so that they know they're allowed to make stupid mistakes, stupid decisions, but they're not going to be left to die because you're going to be there 
be there for them and with them and looking, looking out for them along the way. All right, really important. I think we're going to have to leave that there because I think we're... The one thing I probably, I think you need to think of yourself more as a coach. Absolutely. I think, and that's the most important thing. Well, you think of a, a football coach, they can't go on the ground and play because they're not allowed to. Okay? You're not allowed to go out and play. You've got, you've got to make it happen. You've got to make it win. So how do you do that without physically doing it? All right, just as we wrap up, hold on to these. I want you to bring them next time Next time as well. I would encourage you to read through all the information because next time we really need to go through um, all of the talent dynamics um, stuff with that as well. And how skill level and personality can influence how you go about it for you to get better results. Um, what I want you just to jot down, you can jot down on any of these bits of paper or in your notebook or whatever, what is one or two things that you're going to do differently or focus on more with regards <coughs> to delegation? When you've got something, we won't wait for everybody. Let's just hear from. As soon as you've got something, let me know and let's let's hear from you. Harold, what are you, you finished? Oh, I just got just one. What? Um, for me, just put in writing, make um, expectation in writing, put it in the board because I'm not so I'm I'm very forgetful, so I have to put it on the right. on the office so I can see that every time to time, check the measurement and then. Um, do the follow up specifically. Okay, so expectations in writing for you. Okay, thank you. Who else is done? Yes, Hello. Patrick? Um, for me. Um, I'm going to be avoiding too much follow up. Uh, ah, uh, follow up to too often. Yeah, every now and then. Yeah. And um, I would be more on asking how on the person I delegate to instead of me telling them what to do. Right. Thank you. Sure. I'll be working more on delegation because what you say is a gift so other will feel interested or feel good about it being or having been delegated at desk instead of like just a desk. Okay, thank you. Rose? Uh, I'll delegate more to my junior managers. So cool. they will um, learn. Awesome, thank you. Jason? Mm, I'll be trying to develop some of the junior managers and potential when we yeah, great work on the potential. Thank you. Abby? Uh, mine is giving deadlines and timelines and double get more often. Okay. And so that there's the end the end timeline, the end point? Okay, thank you. Um, Jackie. Finding time to teach people and um, look for people that you can actually teach more so that you can you cannot just delegate staff to this one person all the time. Okay. You can come at everyone. All right, great. So more people, more opportunity. All right, excellent. Lisa? For me, my less on the how, me telling me how to do it, mm -hmm. so it's more on getting the details of how the do that. Mm -hmm. Awesome. That'll make a huge difference too. Great. Thank you. Yeah. Um, invest more time to teach your people. So along the way, they can, uh, you will just do them all of them and they will, you will just ask them. And second one is trust more with your team and setting the pace along the way. Okay, thank you. Right. Michelle? Uh, same thing, learning to trust. And part of that learning to trust is that whole letting them letting them fall over as well. Thank you. Lisa? Okay, great. Yeah, um, trust more and then um, be tired of coaching and teaching, teaching uh, your people rather than being tired of doing the, the task that, that they can Yeah, awesome, great. All right, thank you everybody, great job. Um, now, 
I said, bring these back next time and we'll go through those. As I'm meeting with you during the month, you know, from time to time, these types of things, your time management and your delegation are things that I also want to address with you, whether, I, whether I'm working with a pair of you or a group of you or some individuals as well as we've got, I want to be working on this throughout the month as well, okay? All right, cool. Thank you so much. Um, that's it, bring them back next time. Great job. Well done. Jason, can you, um, have you looked at the manager's just in case another time yeah. tomorrow, just, have a look, just so we've got that as a, as a backup? Thank you.